I'm such an awesome guy, I make so many videos. Brum. Hello there, Price of Reason here with a movie review. As a fan of escapist cinema, I've always enjoyed giant monster movies like King Kong and Godzilla throughout the years, although to be honest, it's not necessarily a genre that I've followed religiously. Some movies I've seen, many movies, especially the older ones, I haven't seen, but generally speaking, these movies are usually pretty fun because who doesn't like watching a big monster destroy stuff? And in more recent years, I didn't mind the 2014 Godzilla movie and 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong which, while not spectacular, were at least serviceable enough popcorn movies. So naturally, when I recently heard that there was a new Japanese language Godzilla movie coming out, it immediately piqued my interest. After all, Godzilla is a Japanese creation first seen in 1954 that was only later adapted for American audiences in various movies, so I was curious to see what their modern take on it would be. And since my only frame of reference for Japanese Godzilla movies was Godzilla 1984, which I've seen many years ago, I didn't really know what to expect. Instinctively, based on that movie, I had anticipated that Godzilla Minus One would be a rather campy and comical giant monster flick, but with all the disappointing movies coming out of Hollywood these days, I figured, how bad could this new Japanese Godzilla movie be? In this video, without going into major spoilers, I'm going to very broadly discuss the main plot of the movie, what I liked about the movie, what I didn't like about the movie, followed by my official score. In 1945, at the end of the Second World War, Shikishima, a Japanese kamikaze pilot, fakes a problem with his engine in order to avoid combat and lands on the island of Odo, where a dinosaur-like creature shows up at night and kills everybody but him and a mechanic called Tichibana. That creature is obviously Godzilla. Now since Shikishima freezes up and fails to shoot Godzilla when he has the chance, Tichibana sees Shikishima as responsible for all of his colleagues' deaths. Feeling survivor's guilt after his performance during the war and the Godzilla incident, Shikishima goes back to Tokyo only to find that the air bombings that took place there have killed many of his family members while also leaving the city destroyed. While trying to rebuild, Shikishima starts living with Noriko, a woman with an orphan baby whose parents were killed during the Tokyo air raids. Due to the personal shame that Shikishima feels about his past, he always seems to keep at a distance from Noriko and the girl while also having trouble getting back on his feet both personally and professionally. But after Godzilla returns, now even more powerful due to a mutation following nuclear tests, Shikishima is once again tested and faced to decide what he believes in and what he's willing to fight for. Now let's talk about what I liked about this movie. Number 1. The Writing I can't recall another time in recent memory when a movie's screenplay really surprised me the way Godzilla Minus Ones did. This wasn't some silly campy movie like Godzilla 1984, but rather a thoughtful and personal period piece that happened to also be a Godzilla movie. If it didn't have a monster in it at all, just seeing this perspective about Japanese soldiers after World War II was already rather fascinating and educational in and of itself. But throw in a cool monster and you really have something special here. Over the past decade or so, especially in Hollywood productions, it seems like they completely forgot about building characters, giving them development and proper arcs. Even take the example of the American 2014 Godzilla movie. Sure, they hired some actors to be in it and tried to give us some more personal stories, but nothing about that movie is memorable at all. When it comes to the human characters, all I can remember about it is that Brian Cranston is in it, and aside from collecting a hefty paycheck, it seems like even he doesn't know what he's doing there. But that is not the case with Godzilla Minus One. I really like the journey of the Shikishima character. It really shows that no matter the genre, when you take time to tell a good story and write good characters, you'll always get the viewers invested. And even from a cultural and historic perspective, I had never really considered what life was like in Japan following the Second World War, and I think that this movie surprisingly manages to touch upon that in a very thoughtful and nuanced way. Number 2. The Visuals Not only do I like the overall historical sets of this movie, that really give the feel of a 1946 Tokyo settings, the scenes with Godzilla look great as well. I dare even say that this is probably the best that Godzilla has ever looked on screen. Ever. And surprisingly, what also looks good here is the way they've integrated the Godzilla visuals within the 1946 period piece sets, which really gives the movie a realistic feel. Number 3. No Agenda While the movie does address certain national and political events in Japan post-World War II, as it provides some type of historical context and commentary on it, 
I never feel that the movie is preachy or annoying in that sense, and thankfully, it also doesn't contain any of the usual Hollywood propaganda nonsense that we've grown accustomed to seeing in recent years. I guess in Japan, maybe they still focus on story and escapism first, which is always good. Also, ironically, with all of Hollywood's current disingenuous diversity initiatives, this movie, with an all-Japanese cast, genuinely accomplishes more in that department just by focusing on good storytelling. Imagine that. Number 4. The Directing this is a very competently directed movie. Takashi Yamazaki, who also wrote the screenplay and led its visual effects team, knows how to find the perfect balance between the more personal scenes of the movie and the action set pieces, which look very impressive. He also knows exactly how to use his cast and get just the right performances out of them where necessary. I admit that I know very little about this director, but after seeing this movie, I'd certainly be curious to see what he does next. Number 5. The Music in a movie like this, in order to give it an epic feel, it's important to have a good musical score, and composer Naoki Sato absolutely delivers in that department. Sato's score is both traditional and grand, and it's exactly what this movie needs. If I had to bring up something that I didn't like in the movie, it would be pretty tough. But if I was pressed, I would say that perhaps there were some plot conveniences within the writing of the screenplay. To be fair though, considering the genre of the movie and what it was going for, these conveniences seem to make sense within the overall narrative, and they certainly didn't keep me from enjoying the movie. Also, and this is just something to point out, the movie is in Japanese with English subtitles, and while I personally have absolutely no issue with that, it's still worth mentioning for those who are deterred by subtitles. Personally, I'm glad that they released the movie with its original language because very often, American actors dubbing over foreign ones can make the dialogue sound kind of awkward. All in all, Godzilla Minus One does a great job being a hybrid of a more personal character-driven Japanese period piece, along with a very well-made monster movie. As I recently discussed in a panel with Tom Connors on Midnight's Edge After Dark, this hybrid approach is actually what makes this film unique and what ultimately makes it work so well. In a time where Hollywood studios are always looking to revive IPs just to recycle them with very little creativity and vision, Godzilla Minus One is truly an exception to the rule. I guess it proves that no matter the movie and no matter the genre, if you have competent people making it and the writing is solid, then the results will speak for themselves. If I had to give this movie a score, while also taking into consideration the movie's specific genre, I would give it a 82 out of 100. That means that more than just getting a passing grade, I actually think that this movie is good, and it's certainly worthy of seeing on a big screen in order to get the best viewing experience. I can only hope that some Hollywood executives go see this movie and take some notes, because this is an example for epic cinema done right. What did you think about Godzilla Minus One? Did you love it? Feel free to let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and also clicking on that wonderful notification bell. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thank you, and good day. Awesome.